Hi there, you're watching News BTC TV. I'm joined by Lawrence, who is an XBT provider. So tell us about your current offering. So XBT provider is an issuer of uh, exchange traded products. Yep. We have a Bitcoin ETN, uh, Bitcoin exchange traded uh, fund, and uh, we listed on the Swedish markets and we have around $400 million in asset today. So we have uh, wow. quite a bit of uh, retail uh, investment. Uh, we have starting to grow also the assets with some institutional clients. And uh, we're the first one to provide in Europe a, um, a Bitcoin offering on a regulated exchange. That's great. I know, I know that in the US it wasn't very successful. We know, all know the story about the Winklevoss twins. Sure. So tell us why wasn't it successful and what's your outlook for the future? Could things change? Sure. Well, one of the things we've noticed with the uh, regulators in the US, and this is purely a SEC oversight, is that they actually implemented that they wanted to see a professional futures-based Bitcoin market, and that was going to provide the liquidity. That was one of the biggest challenge that the Vinkovos brothers actually uh, encountered, and they needed that um, oversight in order to promote their, uh, their product in, in the US market. Now, we're based in Europe, and we don't have that challenge because we can trade liquidity everywhere. One of the things that uh, we noticed in the US is they didn't have that uh, uh, regulatory approval. Now we heard that uh, the CME has actually announced that they're going to launch a second layer professional futures market for Bitcoin. The CBOE also uh, provided this. We think this is great and encouraging news because that will definitely bring the institutional world that we believe is going to be mm -hmm. key to this because at the moment we all know that there are no institutional clients tapping on, on Bitcoin for whatever reason they are. They can't get it in, in their custody account or they can't trade it properly. With having any, a, a financial product um, on a regulated exchange will help that and we certainly see this in the US. We have one in, on the Swedish market and it's doing very well. And what other sort of challenges are you guys facing? Well, the outlook for us is, uh, you know, in, in the last seven months, we've uh, increased the asset by uh, $350 million. Uh, obviously, this has been helped by Bitcoin, so yep. that, that's generally in, in our favor. We need a bit of luck for this as well, but that's very encouraging news. And obviously, mm -hmm. with all these announcements that we're seeing on the professional side, the institutional side, promoting the second layer fit for purpose products, we feel that this is going to be great for the industry. So we're certainly looking at increasing our asset class. We've also launched last month an Ethereum a Bitcoin, sorry, an Ethereum ETN. Uh, that's one month old and we've already gathered over $30 million in assets. That's great. Um, and what else? Is there anything else to keep an eye on? Well, one of the things is that people are talking about having a basket of cryptocurrencies. Yep. So, uh, you know, we have uh, quite a lot of exposure today. You've probably heard of Bitcoin Cash that has made quite a lot of noise recently. Of course, yeah. Um, there's also m more darker mm -hmm. coins that people are looking at, such as Monero, IOTA and Zcash. We, we feel that having a, a basket of um, uh, cryptocurrencies will probably help also people getting involved so there is more diversification. Great, thank you very much for this and hopefully we'll speak again in the future. Thank you, Darren. And thanks for watching News BTC TV. Stay tuned as we have more heading your way. See you later.